Hi folks and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about investing in high yield dividend stocks and ETFs. So today we're going to be talking about the high yield dividends in ETFs and stocks and investing in those. And first I want to say that I'm sorry for not getting this uh, video out a little sooner. With the holidays, of course, we had some uh, visitors, some company, and I was working extra hard as well. So um, just quick apology for that. But we're going to start with a, a little quick update here on, on the portfolio. We added a little more this week than we normally would have because we're starting the $40 a week deal. So we added $20 this Thursday. And uh, if you want to take a look at it over here. We can see that overall we're at a 12.28% return on the video portfolio and uh, that represents $25.04 in gains and $3.39 in earned dividends. So if we continue on and we look at the uh, one day return, you see that we were up four cents today with individual dividend picks and high yield dividends taking the cake on the one week. We got $1.27 earned 31 cents in dividends and for the one month we've got seven dollars and thirty one cents for the quarter twelve dollars and eighty six cents let's go back to one month here real quick and look at the dividends sixty five cents for the one quarter point nine zero in dividends and overall of course our overall winners we've already discussed and for the last month we know that growth has been outpacing everything else and that's our update now on to, to going to cover today the high yield dividends we do have our high dividend yield portfolio or piece of the pie and it's not something that i'm particularly fond of but uh, it's something that's that's played a, a its part in this portfolio for teaching purposes so the idea of this port this overall portfolio was that i would put four individual slices for the different types of investing that I was aware of and trying to teach this to someone else, namely my daughter, and uh, show that there there are different ways to invest depending on what your stomach is for investing or what you feel comfortable doing and put in another way, um, you might pick one of these. So in order to show what all of these have, you know, how all of these react, I wanted to put them all in here, give equal weight to each one of them and then decide on how to proceed from there. And today we're talking about the high dividend yields. That is certainly a, a form of investing that people like to do. And if we look at the definition of what high yield is, here we look it up on Google, a high yield stock is a stock whose dividend yield is higher than the yield of any benchmark average such as the 10 year US Treasury note. I personally would go a little bit further than that and say that uh, high yield would be about 4% or above right now. Uh, anything above that is, in my opinion, high yield and would warrant uh, going into that type of uh, portfolio. Now is that to say every uh, company that's, that's paying more than 4% is reckless or anything like that? No, no, I wouldn't say that at all. There are certainly plenty of companies that are, are yielding 4% or better and uh, are quite stable. As we look into our high dividend yield portfolio, we see several of those companies. So tobacco companies, pretty stable over the long run. Don't change a whole heck of a lot, although you do see some pretty good gains on some of these. If you, if you look at UVV and uh, Philip Morris, those types of companies, it's it's quite a return. Phillips 66, let's see what, what they're paying out. So you get a 5.51% dividend yield on that, for example. Now, a mistake that some investors do is chase the yield. And I can say that I was probably guilty of that when I first started investing as well. So, well, I want a, I want a big payout, you know, I want to do that. So I would only go with something that paid 4 or 5% or above, maybe, and uh, go for those companies without really doing my due diligence and looking into the companies and figuring out, you know, what's a stable company and is this going to last. And then you wind up with 
let me show you one example of, of something that I was very into when I first got into investing is and I threw it in here just for this case AGNC it is a REIT and it has a 10.66 percent dividend yield however if we dig into AGNC let's go into research here AGNC watch this this isn't necessarily the type of stock that I would want in a portfolio knowing my taste and knowing <laughs> what what I'm trying to get out of it so for one thing you see back here in 2015 is paying 22 cents in dividends then it goes down to 20 cents then it goes down to 18 cents then it keeps going down 16 cents and where it's paying 16 cents now in that same time period it's lost a lot of its value at 19.27 percent so not only is the dividend going down every year or so and uh, but you're also losing money on what you have in that it, so it doesn't matter that it's paying out 10.66 percent dividend yield for example and that might be useful for somebody somebody might find a, a reason to use this company but to me it looks like a declining company it's not something that I want in my portfolio look where it went way down here and then it's shot back up a little bit from there and uh, who knows where it's going to go in the future but uh, you know this is these declining dividends and values, I, that's not something that I want in, in my portfolio or something I'm comfortable holding for a long term. Now, it did pay out the 10.66%, but, you know, what did you do with that? Did you reinvest it? Did you put it in something else? Okay, I mean, I guess, I guess you could make an argument for that, but for me personally, I don't want that. And I was making a mistake of chasing that high yield and seeing declining dividends, for example. Well, that's probably not where I wanted to be. So you have to be careful with your high yield dividends if that's what you're chasing. And pick company, let's let's take Philips 66. Let's take a look at that. So if we look at the Philips 66, for example, let's look at it over its five years. So it's gone down 8.82%. Okay, well, that could be good or bad. It's not quite as much as AGNC, is it? Look at the three year though. It's gone up twenty eight point ten percent. Has it have they turned things around? Quite possibly. They might be doing better. One year, oh my gosh, it's up forty eight point oh eight percent. Look at that. That's insane. Now let's look at the dividends. Thirty four cents, forty three cents, forty six cents, forty eight cents, forty fifty one cents, fifty three cents, sixty two cents. You see that the Growth on this is the exact opposite of what AGNC was. I mean, I, I would say it's it's fantastic increase from what five years ago it was paying thirty four cents to what it's paying now at eighty seven cents, and that represents a five point five one percent yield. That's a pretty good yield. Do you, do you have the growth in the stock? Not necessarily eight point eight two percent, but it's paid five point five one percent every year. And, and we see that it's definitely turned things around in recent times, too, as far as its gain, 28.10% over the last three years. Look at from its low to its high. So I would say that this is a stock that's on the upbound, and uh, that, that's not looking at the figures, obviously. And I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't really uh, give you advice on that. But for me personally... I would say this is more in line with what I want to be involved with. Something that's on the upswing has increasing dividends. That's what I want to hold over long term. So that, that would be something more along the lines that I'd want to put in my portfolio. Now, I say you got to be careful with, with chasing high yield dividends. But for that reason, because you can get a declining company and sometimes that... that shows their desperation they they pay out a high rate on their dividends and they may not be able to sustain that so it all comes down to looking into the figures seeing what per, what the payout is and how the company is doing how the cash versus um, debt is is holding up and their income versus debt as well and and just paying attention to what what's going on abv is another one that i actually like if we look into abv's details here we see that over the five-year period, look at that, 33.8% return. 
Now, you did see a, a recent dip, and that was a good buying point, obviously, as you can see, it's going back up. And we'll look at the dividends, 49, 51, 57, 64, 71, 96, a dollar seven. <laughs> That's a huge growth from 49 to a dollar seven. That's more along the lines of, of a company I would be looking to get into. So just looking at the, the chart here and the dividend raises, piques my interest and would make me would cause me to dig into this company a little more and it pays 5.25 percent dividend yield that's pretty good so you can do high yield dividend investing and uh, do it responsibly and have it a part of your portfolio obviously i threw this one together for teaching purposes and i have to say in the next video i'm going to be going over portfolio maintenance and taking this stuff out so stay tuned for that as far as high yield dividends are concerned, be careful chasing high yield dividends. It can be done. Uh, your definition of high yield is going to differ depending on what type of investor you are or who you are and what you're comfortable with. Um, remember, I would say if you want to do high yield dividends, have a bunch of different companies or stick a, a large percentage in an ETF that's not going to go that's already diversified and you don't have to worry about so much of it. You might do a, what's called the satellite version. So you have a big portion in uh, the ETF and then throw a few companies around it that you like. So like and the ones that I pointed out that I like are AbV here and, and Philips 66. So I want those to be part of my portfolio, right? But I'm going to have a big ETF in there as well and have that the main portion of it, maybe 50% or, or better. And then have all the, all the other companies allocated in little positions all around it. That would be what I would recommend for high yield dividends. And again, I'm not a, a financial advisor. So if you have questions about your specific situation, definitely get with a financial advisor. High yield dividends is not what I'm really into. I really do the dividends. And I'm kind of liking a little bit what, what growth is going on as well right now. And, of course, ETF investing is what my main stick is here on this channel because I, th I think that's the, the safest for most investors is ETFs. And overall, you can see what that's bared out. Yeah, so with high-yield dividends, I think that uh, it has a place in some uh, portfolios. In fact, today, if we look at today's results, I can show you what who are the winners here today. Individual dividend picks and high-yield dividends. You see the ETFs and growth were down today. So those two save the day. Now we have interest rates that are low right now. And with interest rates low, people are looking for a higher yield on their money or higher rates of return on their money. So high yield dividends are probably artificially pumped up on a day like today because of those types of those that type of situation. So yeah, it, it could have a place. I'm probably going to cut it out of my portfolio here. And uh, you'll see that in the next video for portfolio maintenance. So stick around and feel free to write below if you have questions or comments. I'd, I'd like to hear what comments you have as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks. We'll see you in the next video.